Hey and welcome back to the Sleep Nanny podcast. I am delighted today to be joined by a fellow Lucy, Lucy Piper, who is the presenter at The Baby Show. Um, And we've met several times at the show. And Lucy has the unique uh, experience, not only as a mother, but being at the show over all these years, speaking to so many experts and having so much exposure to the amazing products, services, and everything, all things babies and parenting, um, that she's uniquely positioned to share some amazing insights with us today. So Lucy, welcome to the show. Oh, hello, Lucy. It's lovely, lovely to see you again. I always love seeing you at the show. Oh, me too. We had such great chats and I know we could talk all day long. Um, But yeah, I'd love to delve in today, Lucy, to some of the um, really the things that you've seen and learned and gained because our children are a similar age, aren't they? They're kind of early teens now, uh, which is scary. Um, but we speak to so many brand new parents, first time parents. And, you know, there's, there's just been so much evolution in the time yes. since we had our little ones. Um, so yeah, I would love to just explore that a little bit. Like some sure. of the things we've seen that, you know, weren't around when we had babies that are now Absolutely. and the things that are there. So like, yeah, what Yeah, yeah so if you were if you're a new parent, there is a show you need to attend. You might have heard about it or seen it. It's called The Baby Show. It happens four times a year. Um, we're at Excel in March. We're going to be at Birmingham NEC in May. We've got Manchester in June, and then we're at Olympia in October. It is the most wonderful place to come along with you, your partners, your parents, anyone that's going to be your village, if you like, raising your little one, all come along. It's a wonderful shopping experience. All the big brands are there. <clears throat> you can um, have a browse, maybe choose your pram. It's a lovely day out, but there's this huge platform Um, the stage and on that stage is where we have all the amazing experts including you lovely Lucy Mm -hmm. and we we talk about sleep we talk about birth we talk about um, coming home with the baby Um, we talk about actually you know those early days with baby and all sorts it's a packed schedule we have some lovely um, mums that join us that you will have seen on your instagram and in the celebrity world we often have some famous faces join us it really is the most wonderful day out and what's wonderful over the years is how many uh, new parents expectant parents come along and join us there and are eager to know and be empowered with all this knowledge that these experts have and i've had the privilege of 20 years hosting wow. that stage uh pre-children all the way through having my children and now i'm just really passionate about helping new mums getting over all the knowledge that we have speaking to all these experts and making that journey from having your baby raising your children as happy as it can be i love that 20 years that's lots of expertise you must be <laughs> very well informed and i think you know, I, I mean, I love I love being there and I also love listening to other speakers as well, because there are um, constantly new new research, uh, also new innovative services as well. The things that um, we parents often come up with out of experiences that we have as parents. So, yeah. for instance, some of the products that I see um on sale in, in at the show that are made by parents who you know had this challenge or this frustration i thought well i guess i've got a really good solution for the, the inventions that are like wow that's an amazing solution to that problem and this the stories behind some of these brands are, are yeah. fascinating um and i love are, a baby product yeah. I'm, I'm still obsessed yeah I'm obsessed yeah. with a new baby product how it can help and like it, you said so problem yeah. solving Exactly. And, and lots of things that weren't that weren't there, but the, the fast pace in which these things have um, popped up since we had our, our babies, um, there are so many things to help make it easier. Yes. Um, and it can also be a minefield for parents going, oh, gosh, do I need this or this or this one or that one? And I've heard good things about this thing and not about that. Oh, my gosh, yeah. it's confusing. But actually, at the show, you get to speak to the 
creators you get to you know actually feel and touch and and really immerse yourself in that and that's one of the things I love yeah um, about I being think there. so I think and there's so much from from when we had our babies Lucy my eldest is now 18 believe it or not my youngest is 14 oh, I know I know young lady herself now but the difference wow. um the social media is huge I think it's lovely yeah. because there's a place where you can go and find your community and be reassured that you're not the only one with the, the certain worries but actually can be overwhelming because there is so much choice so much advice you're not too sure where to start and um, when it comes to product i think uh, we go back to basics you know making sure baby's got clothes making sure they've got somewhere safe to sleep uh feeding equipment but what I've learned, Lucy, I think, and I'm sure you'll feel the same, is when we had our babies, I, I didn't know anything about what they're calling the fourth trimester. This mm. is quite a new word. Yeah. And it's really, I hope this will really help new mums, new parents, that those early days, the 12 weeks when you come home with baby, you're creating, you're going from womb life to room life as one expert yes. says so making it cozy and warm and quiet and you're just getting to know your baby you're not having to throw them into the pram and dash out to these brightly lit malls and be up and dressed makeup on loading the dishwasher you absolutely don't and i think that is a lovely because that is something that i felt I was judging myself probably as a new mum. I thought I had to have everything together. If I wasn't up and dressed with my makeup on by day three, people would judge me that I wasn't coping. Um, that is so changed. The message mm. is so shut the door from the world. Only have visitors when you're ready. Get to know your baby. Get into the nice feeding routine and cuddle your baby. There's no such thing as spoiling them. That's another massive thing, Lucy. Yeah, I thought yeah. if Auntie Brenda was holding my baby for longer than an hour, that was it. It was all out the window. She was never going to sleep on her own. And I got, oh, did you feel like that, Lucy, all those years ago? <laughs> Yeah, I do remember that feeling of, um, well, I mean, some of it is excitement because you want to go out there and, and be, you know, be the mum and try out your new pram. And I think of there course. is an element of that. But I do um, remember feeling like, OK, right. So I'm now a mum. This is my baby. Um, I signed up to way too many um like baby groups and classes that I was getting frustrated going, okay, hold on, I've got to get back from the 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 sign um baby signing yeah, to yeah. then I need to somehow fit a feed in because then we have swim lessons and it's like it, it, crazy mm -hmm. schedules thinking that I needed to do all the things. But actually, yeah, you're right. I, I would have loved a bit more of that messaging around snuggle in, make your nest and enjoy yeah. and indulge because um, and, and that is much more talked about now. It um, is. Yeah, it's... Um, I think the, the message mm. of not only is a baby born, but a mum is born. Yes. You are transitioning and it's allowing yourself a bit of grace, allowing that recovering from the labour and reflecting yeah. and because it, it, it's huge what you've just done. And, and, and these are the messages now that I feel are really certainly at the baby show and i'm so pleased that we talk about the mother's mental health a lot more i, yeah. I remember lucy um it wasn't spoken of and i remember i'd not long had phoebe so we are going back 18 years and someone touched upon feeling overwhelmed and low and my eyes tinged with tears i was on the stage i was presenting and it struck a chord with me and i felt very emotional but it wasn't something that was spoken of and I was <clears throat> and carry on. But now we do whole talks on this. And yeah. I just think it's so brilliant because I just felt a bit alone. I was the only mm. one that perhaps wasn't finding it as easy. I adored my little girl more than anything. I was part of the trouble because I was obsessed by her. I wanted to do everything perfectly. Um, and I feel now that we're, we're, we're really cocooning and embracing our new mums and telling them it's okay. And accepting that those kinds of feelings are normal, you know, that you, you, it, it's okay. And that that doesn't mean you're in some way broken. I think in the same sense that particularly in the UK, when you think, when you think about like mental health and therapy and, you know, for a long time, we've, I think, no, it's been quite 
oh yes, in the USA, people have a therapist, it's completely normal. But in the UK, if you have a therapist, there's, you know, you must, there must be something wrong. You must be somehow you know, mentally unwell. And I think it's becoming more and more understood now in this country and, and probably further afield that actually um, looking after your mental wellness, you know, whether that be various forms of therapy or whatever it may look like is actually a bit of a health hack it's actually um it's goodness it's like going to the yes. gym it's it's like a mind workout or whatever it may be you don't have to be unwell to look after your mental wellness and i think yeah. as new mums you know you, as you quite rightly said we you go through a, a huge thing giving birth is a huge thing no matter how it goes no matter how that yeah. process goes it's it is a huge thing and i think that to feel like there's a shake up of hormones there's all sorts happening and you know if you you know if you have any sort of feelings that aren't all rainbows and unicorns that doesn't mean something's wrong with you it's completely yeah. acceptable and talking about it is is great and i think i i almost think that i don't know anybody that didn't if they put their hand on their heart have some dips in feeling amazing yeah. the whole time yeah. like um yeah and it's I do think we live for a long time with that sort of stiff upper lip I'm okay soldier on everything's fine here um and it doesn't need to be like that anymore that's not that's not healthy so I yes. love that this is talked about I do too and and, and we're, here, we're here talking about sleep and that was probably the biggest thing was because mm. you've got sleep deprivation because mm. you've not had a good night's sleep we know even when we're not raising children or the children are now older and they're not waking in the night um that, that when you don't sleep you feel you just feel awful you the, the world is a lot darker it, it's hard yes. so you you've got to add that on top of this huge life change and mm. um not and also the anxiety because you're looking after the, this this new little baby that you love so dearly and you've so wanted and you're frightened of getting it wrong it's that was suddenly this biggest responsibility um mm. as well so that's all compounded with the sleep deprivation it can get a, a little a, a little overwhelming i think and when you're in that place as well um there's that element of this is my life now this is it this is this is it forever and it's not it's it's going to change and evolve so much and so fast and so you know yes yeah, sure that one tough week may have been awful but it, the following week oh look there's a new that something else has shifted something else. okay there's a new challenge something else to learn but actually that other thing that's got easier and yeah, as you get right. into the flow but i think when we first find ourselves in we, we think that this is it I'm never going to sleep more than three hours in a row. Totally. <laughs> that's, fri and that's frightening. It that is. Can feel, that can feel quite frightening. And you mm. think it's down to you to fix it. So we're now going on to the sleep thing. And, and I felt this big responsibility that back in those days, there wasn't a lot of information about sleep. I found that I followed this one book, this one rule. And if I didn't do that, this was going to be my life. You know, I was mm. going to never sleep again. So with Phoebe, my eldest, I, I absolutely followed this, this book by the, you know, the absolute, mm. uh, you know, word for word. And I look back now and it did not have to be that way. But because mm. that was the only advice we were given, um, I followed that. Whereas with my son, I threw the book out the window and did the absolute opposite. And I wore him and I held him. And I don't, uh, so I went from one extreme to the other. And what I believe, Lucy, there's something in the middle, which I'm sure is what you're very good at. And all the experts that I talk to now, there's something in the middle. You can, you can get that lovely, gentle uh, sort of sleep practice in. It's that yeah. sort of lowering your expectations and, and it's practicing you and yeah. baby getting to know each other and practicing rather than this big swing I did from one extreme to the other. And I think that's why I'm passionate about helping new mums because I've seen from the experts over the 20 years, that it can be very gentle. You can feel completely comfortable with it. You do not have to leave your baby to cry, which nobody wants to do. You don't have to, and it's wonderful. And I'm so thrilled that this is the information that the parents are getting now and getting that kind of support. I think it's brilliant. 
It's so reassuring. And I think, yeah, there, and, and I'm sure both of yours, whichever you know, <laughs> approach you took, I'm sure they're both absolutely fine now. And it's all, and it's all good. But how nice to uh, not have to go through that feeling of, of confusion or, or almost like, yeah, if I do this, if I, or if I don't do this, I'm going to in some way damage them or not get it right. We all want the absolute best for them um, growing up. And I think, likewise if it's it's knowing why as well with sleep it's knowing well why like you do not have to do anything around sleep if you don't want to and everything's fine for you because in some situations you just get into a good routine and it just seems to work for you and everything's fine and everybody's getting all the rest that they need and everyone's perfectly happy and perfectly healthy so don't worry like just carry on because you've obviously just got it right for you for you that mm. works um whereas in other situations no matter what we seem to do something's just not working and if that leaves a a parent in a, a terrible state of exhaustion that's you know not only impacting on their own health but on their ability to um parent to the best of their ability mm. it's also going to be impacting the little one's health and development and, and well-being and and so if you do feel like it's not quite where you'd like it to be that's also perfectly normal perfectly okay and something that you can look at and see what you could tweak to make things better for everyone and i yes. think it's it's kind of just knowing that that's all we're really talking about when it comes to improving sleep it's not right we're going to sleep train you're going to have to leave your child to cry I think for at least 10 word, minutes and it? not respond to them and i think that's i know it is it's that word it's got that kind of taboo but yet we potty train and we have training wheels on a bicycle and you all these other things that we do i actually think though particularly in the work that we do i, I try and like shift the language slightly but not so much that we're trying to pretend it's something else but shifting the language around that because actually you don't really you know tr treat the child and and the sleep consultants you know we run the sleep nanny franchise and our consultants out there they're not they're not going into people's homes and training babies or children to do mm. anything they're actually coaching and working with the parents to help them with the strategies that they use, the parenting strategies that they use to help them to make sure that that is positively conducive to helping the little one develop really healthy sleep and not inadvertently, accidentally um, hindering that development. Because sometimes mm. the things we do that we think might help, we're hindering. We're like, my child won't stop crying. It's like, actually, it's because I'm, you know, I'm trying to do this so much and they're actually overstimulated and they actually are, are like, mm. they don't want me to do that. So it's, it's actually parent coaching. That's really what it, it's about. Um, and I, I love that because it's an opportunity to learn yeah. the things that we don't otherwise know. We don't know. They don't come with a manual. They didn't we come did, with we've never done this before. You no. know, you've, never, you've never done this before. The babies arrive not knowing day from night. Yeah. And I think, yeah, and I think that it's... It's a the, minefield. The, problem, the problems that seem to come up, Lucy, this might be a good thing to ask you as you're here. The problems that come up time and time again that I hear on the stage are things like... Um, Getting your little ones to be independent sleepers, not feeding to sleep, rocking to sleep, shushing to sleep. That seems to be, and I remember it very, very well. How do we, how do we make them become independent sleepers mm. without calling out for you as soon as, because if they fall asleep on the booby and then wake up and they're suddenly in their crib, they're going to cry for mummy, aren't they? Because they're, they they're not yeah. where they went to sleep. Yeah, I'd be and that's if that happened to me. Yeah, yeah, and if you imagine as well, like you you described the fourth trimester, but they've gone from being very kind of tightly wrapped and closely held in in the womb, where there are sounds, white noise, um, movement all the time, to completely still on some form of mattress um, with space around them and it's mm. all completely alien and so you know they're going to say help I don't know what to do here I need some assistance and that yeah. is what they need and crying is a form of communication so the objective isn't to end crying because they're supposed to do that it's about mm. learning to respond to those cries and in a way that's helping um, and, and mm. supporting them and sometimes they do need a pick up 
and a cuddle and a little rock mm. or a little lullaby and some soothing and all those natural instincts that we have. And sometimes that's exactly what they need. But I think, mm. I suppose the differentiator, and I mean, this is, it's completely individual with every family um, and every situation. But I suppose the overarching sort of differentiator is if those things are constantly used as a means to get to sleep and back to sleep, then they're not being given the, the room to develop mm. that um, now not is skill, but I, I know some people don't like that idea of like developing that skill, but it's actually to, to develop the the confidence around or the, the feeling safe and secure mm. about and and adjusting to that sensation of falling to sleep because mm. when they feel that sensation and it could be with you right there and, and soothing them but when they feel the sensation of falling asleep then it becomes a familiar like you said practice and yeah like, oh, i've got this so we can support mm. our little ones in the development of that so that when they're ready they can settle independently to sleep and back to sleep we can support them with that development process it's not yeah. all or nothing it's not they have to fall asleep on the boob or I have to put them down, walk away, ignore them and leave them to cry. Yeah, like there's not... something in the middle, isn't there? Yeah. It's very gentle. Yeah. It's teamwork. Absolutely. It's teamwork. Yeah. And, you know, and I do liken this to all the other things we teach them, you know, from weaning to potty training to learning to ride a bike. Like we don't just suddenly go, right, that's it. I'm not going to do that for you anymore. I'm taking this away. Mm. Off you go. We, it's a process. It's gradual. Yeah. And we yeah. help them along. We show them, yeah. we role model, we give them a little chance to do it. And then, we, oh. you know, it's a, it's a it's team quite effort. Joyous. It's quite joyous when you start seeing, I do remember that, I don't know if you did this, Lucy, or anyone listening or is already doing this, but I found this really good, was just this little routine, even if it was just a set song or a yeah. set lullaby. And, in, and I did exactly the same thing with them. And I found, well, I loved it. I knew what I was doing. I thought, right, now we have a bath. Now we put the shutter down. Now we sing this song. Now we, and you just, that was massive, that little routine. Yeah. Even my husband remembers it. He said to me the other night, do you remember that song? You know, because he had the routine down because if it's yep. his turn to do it, I was like, you absolutely need to do this and she needs this and she needs this. This is a little sleep su support trigger or whatever with word you use. Yeah. This is another yeah. little sleep, um, what do you call it? The like a cue. Sleep. It's like a cue, isn't it? That's the word. Yeah. Little yeah. sleep cue for them. And, yeah. uh, and it was, and it was lovely actually. And, and, and as you see them lull into a sense of relaxation as you do the sleep cues, that's wonderful. It you is. feel so proud of them and yourself. <laughs> and yourself. And we see it as well when we um, see so sometimes parents will send us like um, a clip of their baby monitor, their video monitor or something. And that satisfaction when you see a little one, you know, a baby in their cot on, on the camera, um, wake up, which we all do. That's normal. Humans do that. We wake in sleep. That's normal. And you wake up and you'll see them like the little eyes flicker and they look around. And they might utter a couple of noises or something and then they might shift a bit and then they go back to sleep and wow. when a parent sees that they often share that with us because they're like look look at this and it's like wow. they're totally happy and they've managed to go mm, I know that I'm safe here and um, this is all good I'm comfortable and if I need something I have a caregiver that will come and meet that need um and they and it is it's instilling that secure attachment trust and confidence mm. in them and that that is achievable younger than a lot of us think we think that oh yeah but they can't do that till they're toddlers or beyond and it's like not true they can do mm. that really early on it's just supporting them in the development of that mm. not not Amazing. just you know oh I'm going to do it all for them and then I'm going to take it all away <laughs> sure they, yeah you know. it doesn't work like that does it <gasps> the other question we get asked a lot Lucy is that comes up time and time again in our sleep talks at the baby show is early wakings yes um, I was talking to someone at work the other day and her little one is sort of 4 a.m 5 a.m and she said if I could just get to six it's still early but I'll accept six but um yeah, yeah that, that's that, yes, yeah, six is good, um, but four, five is still night time. Yeah. Um, that comes up time and time again, Lucy, that question. Yeah. That seems to be a tricky hurdle. 
It is, and, and quite often, I mean, there is a certain amount of wiring. There is a certain amount of genetic wiring as to whether we're an early bird or not. And that that's a whole nother conversation. Um, and some little ones will, you know, no matter what you do, they're going to have their kind of wake up time. But I will say reassuringly that you can get that to be six. It doesn't need to be earlier than six. But you're right. Earlier than six is nighttime. It can be six. So if you're not getting to six as your minimum, um, I would be looking at a few things to do with that routine because there's a good chance that somewhere there's something a little off track for them at that developmental stage, which is why you could have it great for a while and then you start to get these early wakes. It could be environmental, so it can be noise, <clears throat> light, those kinds of things that are waking them, but it can also be routine and it, it can leave them in either stages of sleep or cycle that are causing them to be awake at that point and then they're not able to resettle. Mm. Um, it can be, so the kind of the, the classic sort of turn of phrases that, oh, well, it's overtiredness that causes that, but that's a bit vague. And so actually, if we drill deeper, we'll see, well, why? But yeah, typically, it's kind of strange. But when we're really tired, we do tend to wake up and we're like, Bing, really early. And it's like, mm. oh, I'm really tired. Surely I would sleep longer. But my 11 year old did that literally just this week. And I was like, you normally sleep longer. You're up really early. And Mm, you had training last night you got to bed a bit late you, you're probably more tired and it's like yep mm. awake being like yeah there is there is a bit of a a chemistry that's going on um mm. there but it's the, I think the hardest thing with that is so often as parents instinctively we think oh waking early need to go to bed a bit later then yeah and yeah. that's the like the knee-jerk reaction isn't it? it's the kind of the common sense reaction but actually that's likely to perpetuate the problem so yes um yeah yeah that's right and the other one i'm just thinking of the three biggest ones um when the babies are having their daytime naps they can't, can't seem to get past 45 minutes it's like 35 45 minutes ping and we yeah. know that they probably need a nice hour hour and a half and yeah. we've worked really hard on settling them and you go yeah. downstairs sit down to have a cup of tea for and then the minutes, ding. that's yeah. common as well. Is that just something it to is. do with the sleep cycles, Lucy? It is, and actually newborns, that's that's fine. Like they're not probably gonna sleep longer than that and that's acceptable, like you would expect mm. 45 minutes in a wake up and that's okay. But once they are sort of six months and beyond, you're right, we want to see more like an hour and a quarter or an, an hour and a half maybe, depending on where we are. But the 30 to 40 window where we do get that wake up and they wake up usually yelling because mm. and, and you're like, oh no, it's not like a little happy waking. It's a, ah. um, and that usually means they're not finished sleeping. So they've come, they've gone into sleep, they've gone into deep sleep, they've come through, they're in a lighter sleep stage. And instead of finishing off the sleep cycle and then knitting it into another one, which is quite a difficult thing to do and yeah. it takes practice, um, they, they're kind of like, I call it like falling out of sleep. They're like rousing and it's like, oh no, wait, what? And then they're, they're crying because they're actually saying, well, well, I don't know how to get back to sleep. What do I do? I'm stuck, help me. And where am I anyway? Because they didn't fall asleep there or whatever it might be. And so we go, oh, baby's awake and get them up. But actually, baby wants to go back to sleep. Can we help them? Is there something we can do yeah. to support that? And the um, the secret to that lies in practicing the the settling to sleep at the start of the nap and helping them to be that little bit more aware of where they're going and, and, and feeling the falling asleep sensations so that when they have those wakings, they're naturally going on into the next cycle subconsciously. They're not, you know, they're not aware of this, <laughs> but so yeah. that, that naturally happens rather than getting stuck. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. It's so fascinating. And it's it been all these things, as I say, over the years, they come up time and time again. Yeah. So don't think yeah. if you're listening to this that you're the only one that has all these these uh, issues with your little one because it's very common, isn't it? It really is. And I, I have to say, I love that the attendance at the, the talks at the baby show, you know, people come and they're listening and they'll ask their questions or even if they're just quietly there taking it all in. I have so much admiration for parents who um, 
who tool up with this kind of knowledge um, and, and get informed before the whirlwind um, happens, it's whether that's true. the first time, you know, it's a, it's a life changing thing when a baby comes into your world or whether it's an addition because it's still going to shake things up a bit, but to actually, before you, you know, are going to have inevitable disrupted sleep for a little while to take this information in and to come and to listen and learn with a clear and ahead yourself. yeah and yeah. actually it can really stand you in great stead because then you you know what to expect you know that you know it's not it, it's normal and it's nothing to worry about but here are some things that you can do to just kind of cope well with that and 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 you know work with that process and it's really reassuring and we often yeah. A certain amount of that on our app as well and so parents can mm. equip themselves with that before they even have a baby and i love yeah, that they do come bit, along and yeah you have that yeah. bit of time particularly for your first i know it's a little bit more uh, of a busier time if it's your second or third babies but if it's your first it's all part of that lovely build up that nesting time where you're yeah. uh, making all the plans and hopefully batch cooking some food away to just be yeah. thinking about this sort of thing so you do know what to expect so oh, i do mm. remember lucy at the baby show saying that this might happen or or just knowing where to go if you need that help as well yeah. thinking right that lucy mentions an app or or there's 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 some sleep um experts that can help me um yeah. to my bastards that can come along and help me if i do need that sort of extra helping hand in that it doesn't a, a bit like we said earlier about our you know our mental well-being and everything it doesn't have to be a crisis situation where we're in desperate you know something's mm. desperately bad or wrong and actually you know we can um ask for help and get guidance to put us in the best possible stead um not wait until we're in a really difficult situation or sadly as i see when mums say okay I've been in my car and had a near accident with my baby. Oh, no. I'm not in a good place. I'm so exhausted. And it's like, don't wait for that tap on the shoulder um, from the universe mm. to say, you really need to, you know, just, it, it, you can, if you feel like it could be better or even you don't even have a problem, but you just want the that support and knowledge. I think it's a wonderful thing to equip yourself with, not just for sleep, with all the things I wish I knew a lot more about yeah. nutrition but, and, and yeah, yeah or birth, even birth like, it, even birth itself. Just, I wish yeah. I explored some hypnobirthing and things like that. I didn't get the chance, but um, mm. had I've come along and had I've known about these things, and I think it's wonderful that that information is all there. Um, yeah, so it just wasn't there when we, you know, there were some when we had ours, but there's so much more now, and I think um, not just information, but stuff there are some really great products that that yeah. help you that can support you even from the pillows that can make feeding easier the carriers that can make you know holding my and favorite wearing your babies yeah my yeah. sorry i interrupt you then lucy nice. but i've just you. jumped into my head yeah. um that would have made a huge difference is now these wonderful next to me cribs that yes. actually go right alongside the bed i was getting Thanks. out of the bed going yeah. over to the moses basket that was completely static there was no I was sort of shaking this moses basket <laughs> and that was exhausting just getting up and down the thought of it your baby if you've not seen this before if you're listening to this and you, you're not aware you can buy these they've got their own safe sleeping space right next to you so baby can yeah. absolutely be safe but their yeah. arms reach wow that is a huge game changer it's isn't a it? game changer i would have 100 percent had something like that they didn't exist when we had ours did they and like what an evolution and yes new mums you don't know how lucky you are <laughs> having these yeah. things that we didn't have but it does make all of it so much more accessible but it also aids recovery for mum like you said you don't need to be getting up like some of us have all quite well there's all kinds of stitches and things that might go on and you, you just need to be resting and yeah, yeah. It's, it's wonderful that and having them really close to you but they're safe in their yeah. own little safe space but their yeah. arms length i just think is is wonderful so that that's really a great thing i think when it comes to mm. sleep and i it know is. we we 
we could talk forever about swaddling and and the little yeah. um, grow bags that they can go in. The sleeping bags are wonderful. Yeah. They did have those in our day. The sleeping bags, they were great. They did, but even they've come a long way now. With you know ones with the little footholds, so as they grow yeah. and they don't fall over if they're starting to stand up, and like even and and you know the fastenings that the the clever little ones that have learned to escape, they can't undo them. Yeah. Like, this is all I believe so much of this is parent led where parents go hmm this product would be better if and then they invent a modification and you know it's I, I yeah, love that it's about the, the the parenting industry that we are we're Very carving exciting. out yeah it really is yeah there's lots of helping hands out there there really is so you can enjoy and really be present and enjoys it there will be exhaustion there'll be all sorts of feels won't there lucy you'll yeah, be happy course. one minute and then feeling overwhelmed the next but as best you can yeah. is enjoy because it is fleeting you you mentioned at the very top that every stage you feel like is this it is this forever then all of a sudden they change they grow a bit yeah. and that isn't a problem anymore but something else has cropped up and yeah. looking back uh, everyone says it goes quickly enjoy it <sighs> but that is real <laughs> that is a real does. thing because <laughs> yeah. it really does and yeah what i'd give to have a day a couple of days with them as newborns again and sit on my yeah. sofa and watch netflix i'd love I to know, <laughs> me too me too and i think i did and do try to appreciate every single stage and indulge in it because every, at every stage i'm like i'm going to treasure this because this this moment this this phase isn't going to last long um and so i do think i did that but it, yeah i'm the same i would a lot of times i think oh i'd love to go back to that that point and or just squeeze the little like cherubs now yeah. they're teenage yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then, absolutely. but then this is a brilliant stage too, in its own, <clears throat> in its own right, and you know, enjoying all the things that we can still do before they're all grown up and don't want to hang out with us anymore. <laughs> it blows your mind. You've created these little people, and it's mind blowing, and it's a, it's a real journey. And I never, yeah, always feel like it's a great gift being a mum. It is. It really is a true <laughs> thing. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you and I really hope that for our listeners it's been um, inspiring and also reassuring that they, you know, there are so many tools, resources and kind, positive people out there that are you know, really here to help make it easier. And, and having conversations like this is, is important, I think, and, and sharing these messages is so, so important. Um, I know that both you and I will be on that stage again um, yeah, at the next show. Um, we'd love to see as many of you there. So any parents that are listening um, that would like to come along, we will put a link in the show notes so you can access all the information about coming to the show or one of the shows. Come and say hi. Come and say yeah. listen to the podcast and come and say hello. And, and Definitely. obviously you'll be there with answering all the questions and yeah. we look forward to meeting all the new and expectant parents absolutely can't wait thank you so much lucy for being with thank us thank you today. for having me lucy see you soon see you soon <laughs>